Magic the Gathering has been around for over 25 years, and a lot has happened throughout that time. This is my best attempt to cover all the important information in about nine minutes. June 26, 1963, Richard Garfield is born in Philadelphia. He grows up traveling the world since his father is an architect. He always had an interest in developing games and designed his first game at just 13. After earning a Bachelor of Science and a PhD in Combinatorial Mathematics at the University of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, he went to work at Whitman College as a math professor, since he thought working as a game designer wouldn't work out. Richard contacted Wizards of the Coast to develop another game he had designed called Robo Rally. It turned out that Robo Rally was too difficult and expensive to produce, so Peter rejected the idea. I like this game a lot, but for where we were at, at the time, it seemed too complicated for a small company like mine, so I passed on it. Richard asked, quote, if you're not interested in board games, what are you interested in? If you describe the game you want, I'll design it, no matter what kind of game it is, unquote. Peter Adkinson asked Richard to produce a card game with a fantasy or science fiction theme. One week later, Richard came up with the basic idea of a trading card game. Adkinson writes, each person uses his or her own deck, and new cards could be introduced without changing the rules. The cards can be collected and traded, with some cards more rare than others. It was heavily inspired by another game he developed called Five Magic, early prototypes of which date back to 1982. Richard Garfield then quit his job at Whitman to help develop the game. In August of 1993, right here at Gen Con, but in Milwaukee, Magic the Gathering, was released. He launched the game with limited edition alpha. There was also a general release in August. It was a huge success, and the initial print run of 2.6 million cards sold out quickly. So in October, limited edition beta was released. It had the same cards, just printed more of them. Depending on the source, the print run is either 7.3 or 7.8 million cards. Beta sold out just as quickly. Wizards kept printing more sets, which would consistently sell out quickly. The print runs kept increasing, and and the game growing. In October of 1993, Richard Garfield wanted to propose to his girlfriend Lily Wu and wanted to make it memorable. So he had Quentin Hoover, Lily's favorite magic artist, create art for a special card called Proposal. He put four of them in a deck and played a few games with it until he drew it and was able to cast it. It reads as follows. Allows Richard to propose marriage to Lily. If the proposal is accepted, both players win. Mix the cards in play, both libraries and both graveyards as a shared deck. She accepted. Fourth edition and Chronicles devalued many cards and collectors weren't happy. On March 4th, 1996, Wizards responded by introducing the reserve list. It introduced a list of cards which Wizards wouldn't reprint. In 2002, there was a revision to the reserve list and no cards from Mercadian Masks and later would be reserved. Faraz's ban was reprinted in fifth edition but was mistakenly still on the reserve list. It was also revised in 2010 to apply to premium cards closing the previous loophole of printing reserved cards as foils or other premium versions. The first format in Magic was Vintage, previously referred to as Type 1, followed by Standard, previously called Type 2. In 1996, Adam Staley built a deck with Nicol Bolas as the commander and created the first version of Elder Dragon Highlander. There were only five options of what your commander could be. The five Elder Dragons. You could only play with the colors of your commander. It was singleton, including basic lands, meaning only one copy of each card can be played. There was a time where the rules changed to allow any legendary creature in Legends, but only one deck for each Legends commander may exist in your local area. After college, Adam moved to Alaska and met Sheldon Menery, a level 5 judge who would play a large role in the format's growth and development. Since Sheldon commonly traveled the world going to different Magic tournaments, he brought EDH with him and experimented with it. He opened the format to having any legendary creature as your commander, made it so you can play multiple copies of basics, and and much, much more. There were many in-betweens and different versions of the rules, but I don't want to get too repetitive. So let's move on. I'll talk more about Commander later in the video. By the end of 1996, TSR was over 30 million US dollars in debt. They were selling books at a loss, overpaying for licenses, and didn't listen to their customers. In 1997, when the Dungeons and Dragons company, TSR, fell on rough times, we were able to buy them, turn them around, return them to profitability, and get Dungeons and Dragons back in the market. So in April of 1997, Wizards acquired TSR for 25 million US dollars, which ended up being a good decision since D&D is now one of their largest games. August 20th, 1997, Wizards was granted the patent
important for the quote trading card game method of play. They tried to control the CCG market with this for a while by sending out threatening letters, and a few people agreed to their patent license agreement, but not many. One of my special moments that I, I recall is in the late 90s, a wonderful man by the name of Ishihara. He came to thank us for making Magic the Gathering because Magic was the inspiration for his game, Pokemon. And he wanted to know if we would like to be his partner in America. We said yes. <laughs> in 1998, Wizards announced that it had licensed the rights from Nintendo to print Pokemon trading cards outside of Asia, which ended up being extremely successful and making Wizards a lot of money. In 1999, Hasbro acquired Wizards of the Coast for 325 million US dollars for Pokemon printing rights, Magic, and D&D. I was able to sell my company to Hasbro 11 years after I started it. Made a lot of money for a lot of people. In the summer of 2002, MTG Online was launched. It was a virtual adaptation of Magic, and in 2007, MTGO was, quote, somewhere between 30 to 50% of the total Magic business, unquote, according to Worth Wolpert. September 30th, 2003, Wizards printing rights for Pokemon trading cards expired. Pokemon USA immediately began producing a new edition for the game. On the 1st of October, Wizards filed a lawsuit against Nintendo for, quote, abandoning a contract with Wizards, the longtime producer and distributor of Pokemon trading card games, and using Wizards' patented methods and technology to manufacture the games itself. The lawsuit was privately settled out of court and the details were not revealed. But Pokemon USA continues to print these cards. In December of 2003, Mark Rosewater became Magic's lead designer and has stayed the lead designer since. In 2004, Chuck Webner was replaced as CEO of Wizards by Lauren Greenwood. Back to talking about Commander. A big turning point for Commander was when Scott Larrabee, Wizards manager in charge of the Pro Tour, joined in on a game. He was hooked. And he brought it back to Wizards headquarters. In 2006, Sheldon Mennery, Gavin Duggan, and Duncan McGregor started MTGCommander.net, which was and still is the official place for Commander rules. Commander is the only major format that isn't managed directly by Wizards. Before then, Alaska Magic was used for hosting the rules, but the new site played a large role in the growth of the format. In 2008, Greg Leeds replaced Lauren Greenwood as CEO of Wizards. In 2011, Wizards started selling Commander products, which were a huge success. And nowadays, Commander is the largest format in Magic. In 2016, Chris Cox replaced Greg Leeds as CEO of Wizards. MTG Arena was released for Windows in a beta state in November of 2017 as a newer, free-to-play, and more polished version of MTGO. October 29, 2019, Wizards announced that it was acquiring Took Game, a digital game development studio. They helped develop Arena, and it was fully released for Windows in September of 2019. It was also released on macOS in June of 2020, and iOS and Android in March of 2021. In December of 2019, Wizards sold the first Secret Layers, a print-to-demand direct-to-consumer product which was incredibly successful. These have proven to sell well, and Wizards is continuing to make more. In early 2021, Hasbro reorganized its business structure to support the continued growth of Magic and D&D. D&D saw a 33% increase in sales over 2019, and Magic had a 23% increase. Even so, Hasbro had an 8% revenue loss in 2020, meaning that the company earned 8% less than it expected, which it partially blamed on retail shutdown. The reorganization of Hasbro split it into three departments, and Wizards and Digital holds Wizards' assets. The present and future of Magic. Magic is the biggest it's ever been, and there are no signs this will slow down. They are growing in profits and players through the physical and digital space, and the pandemic hasn't seemed to affect them very much. The future of Magic is bright, and I'm excited to see what will happen through the coming years. Leave a comment if you think I missed an important aspect. Like the video if you liked it or learned something new. And watch this video next if you can't decide which Magic tech to build.